So a few months ago, I was thinking about it and I thought about how weird it is that I didn't know how vanilla was made. I mean, it's kind of odd for something that's so common and literally in everything. Where does it actually come from? Why is it so expensive? And I'm not gonna lie, why does it look kind of weird? Looking into this, it turns out vanilla is a lot weirder and more complex than I had originally thought. And so today I wanna go through my attempt at making vanilla from scratch by curing vanilla, or basically taking it from a raw vanilla bean and turning it into something that can actually be cooked with. Now, honestly, I really wasn't sure how this is gonna work out, but in the end, I'm pretty satisfied with my results. And frankly, this is something that's totally doable at home. So let's go ahead and start this party train. So it turns out the vanilla actually comes from a flower. Specifically, vanilla pods come from the fruit of a genus of tropical orchids, which are originally from Mesoamerica. Now I find this kind of funny because it's also where chocolate originates from. And just like chocolate, vanilla has to be grown in tropical climates with high levels of humidity and sunlight under very specific conditions. Now for this reason, it can only really be grown in certain parts of the world. And one of these places actually happens to be Hawaii. Now while looking for raw vanilla, I was able to get in contact with this awesome vanilla plantation on the island of Kauai in Hawaii, which is known as the Vanillary. Now probably because it comes from an orchid, vanillas are a very, very finicky plant and need a lot of tender human care to produce vanilla pots. So for for example, at the vanillary, they grow the vanilla orchids, they have to hand pollinate the flowers and hand pick the beans from the plants. It's a super labor intensive process, and this is partially why real vanilla is so expensive. And the other part of that is the fact that it takes a lot of processing to turn the vanilla into stuff that you can actually cook with. When harvested from the plant, they almost look like green beans and smell and taste very little like vanilla. As it turns out, it's the process of curing that will turn these green beans into the flavor bomb that vanilla is known for. Now it turns out Roland from the Vanillary has published a pretty awesome guide online of curing your own vanilla, which is more or less the method I'm gonna be using today. I will link to that guide in the description and I definitely recommend checking it out. So now, I, since I live in DC, which isn't really known for its subtropical climate, the Vanillary was kind enough to ship me some raw vanilla pods to play with. Now, in principle, one should start the curing process within 24 hours of picking them. However, due to the distance between Hawaii and DC, this turned out not to be so feasible. Now, even with FedEx's best efforts, it still took a few days for them to arrive from Hawaii. So when I received them, they had already started to turn a little brown, but as it turns out, that's okay. Now, if we cut open one of these pods, you can see the interior is quite slimy and it has a lot of little seeds. Now, as I said earlier, it doesn't really smell like vanilla. Now, there is an element of it, but it's very faint. It has a more tropical, almost fruity, flowery smell, which is pretty nice, actually. Once again, this kind of reminds me of chocolate. I mean, when you taste the seed inside of a cocoa pod, it really doesn't taste like chocolate. It's only through the process of fermentation and roasting that it really develops the flavor that we know as chocolate. Similarly, we're gonna do the same thing for our vanilla. So now that I have the vanilla, it's just a matter of curing it. Now these pods are technically still alive. So if you were to attempt to cure these pods as they are, possibly they could sprout and start to turn into vanilla plants. Now as awesome as that is, I'm not really sure how to do that. And also I probably would kill it because I'm just really bad with plants. So to kickstart the curing process, what we need to do now is kill these pods. Now, killing the pods will initiate the enzymatic process that will lead to the formation of vanillin, which is the main flavor compound that we associate with vanilla. Now, going back to killing the pods, there's a few ways to do this. You could place them in the freezer for a few days, and water inside of the cells will turn to ice, puncturing the cell walls, effectively eviscerating the plant from the inside. However, apparently some flavor can be lost in this process, so the preferred method apparently is to heat treat them in a hot bath. And that's what I'm gonna do today. So to do this, I'm gonna heat up a pot of water until it reaches between 130 and 150 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 55 to 65 degrees Celsius. And once the pot reached about 140 degrees Fahrenheit, I toss the beans in and really watch the temperature. They need to sit in this hot water for about two and a half to three minutes at which point we can fish them out and you know really dry them off and now we can actually begin the curing process so this process is meant to emulate the curing process that occurs in these hot and humid climates that vanilla grows in now I want to take a moment to point out that Roland from the Vanillary developed this really awesome method uh, to cure vanilla at home using just a cooler a ziploc bag and some time and if you're doing it at home I totally recommend following this method however the pods themselves have to be harvested within a very fine time frame and then the curing process has to begin almost immediately, as I mentioned earlier. Unfortunately, this time frame happened to be exactly during the first vacation I had planned in three years. So although Roland's Guide is awesome and I would have loved to have done it, I needed something a little more automated. In essence, to cure vanilla, all we need is heat, humidity, and time. And as it turns out, Anova makes an oven which can inject steam and increase the humidity inside of a chamber. And I think this thing's mostly designed for making super nice breads, but I was able to kind of hijack it into doing my vanilla curing bidding. I have to say, I'm not sponsored or anything by Anova. It just happened to be that they have this really awesome automated thing. So let's go back to our vanilla. So once I extracted the beans from the hot water, it's time to actually start the curing process. So to do this, I heated the oven up to 100 
115 degrees Fahrenheit, and then to turn the humidity inside all the way to 100%. Once again, we're really trying to emulate the conditions of a tropical environment. I, at this point, I went ahead and put the beans inside, and we're just gonna let them sit inside of this hot, humid climate for a while. And during this time, the beans are gonna get limp and sticky, and apparently this is what we're looking for. Enzymes are turning the basic components of the vanilla plant into a bunch of flavor compounds that really make vanilla so unique. However, one thing that can happen in this environment is that the beans can start to mold or rot. And so to prevent this, every 48 hours, the beans need to be dried out. Now, traditionally, this is done by bringing the beans into the sun once per day during curing. In Roland's method, he transfers the beans into a dehydrator for about an hour. Now, in my case, in this kind of automated setup, I just turned the humidity percentage down to zero and kept the temperature at 115 degrees for an hour. If you kind of pull them out and feel them at this point, the beans should feel a little bit drier, but they should still be a little squishy and sticky to the touch. After they've kind of been dried a little bit, we can return the beans to the sweating process so that the stuff inside the vanilla can continue to develop those delicious flavor compounds. Now to do this, I just crank the humidity back up to 100% and let it go. Now this cycle we're going to repeat a few times, and after the first time that we do it, the subsequent sweats are going to be only going for about 23 hours. So so basically we have a cycle of sweating for 23 hours, drying for one hour, and we need to repeat this process for 16 days or essentially 18 days after we initially place them into the oven. This is during the time where I'm going to go on vacation. Now this process may seem a little excessive, however it does really remind me of how chocolate works. It's something that tastes nothing like the original process, but after over time it develops more and more flavor. And what we should notice is that as our vanilla cures, it will start to smell more and more and more like vanilla, but it's also going to develop some other great smells, you know, smells similar to leather and wood. And we're just gonna let this go for these 16 days. So now after these beans have been sweat in the sweat cycle for 16 days, the beans really have developed a lot of their flavor. And now it's just a matter of really drying these beans out. But we wanna do this as slowly as possible. It's gonna allow any last bits of flavor to develop and give us something a little more shelf stable. So to do this, I turn the oven down to 90 degrees Fahrenheit and slowly drop the humidity percentage over the course of four weeks. If you're doing this at home, Roland recommends doing this in a place that is dry but not too dry and basically monitoring this over the course of four weeks. Placing them into something like a food dehydrator will just dry them out too quickly. So as they dry, moisture will leave the pods and the vanillin will concentrate forming really strong flavors. And after the weeks of drying, the drying was complete and this is the vanilla I ended up with. Now the stuff I have here is a little more plump than you would find at the store. However, it's definitely not lacking in flavor and it smells incredible. Now to fully develop the flavor, you need to do three months of what's known as conditioning. Basically, you're gonna let them sit for another three months. However, you should have something kind of usable at this point. So if you wanna grab one or two to play with, it should be good. And honestly, I'm astonished at how well these turned out. Now at this point, I picked out about 20 of the pods, making sure to grab any that have started to split and place them into about 500 milliliters of vodka. And what I'm gonna do is basically soak this in the vodka for a few months. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a nice vanilla extract. So that's pretty much it. I mean, we ended up with some really nice vanilla here uh, and I've got quite a bunch of it. I'm gonna have to come up with some really cool recipes to be able to use the, uh, all of this vanilla. Um, additionally, we have our awesome extract. It's gonna take a few months, probably about six months to be able to get strong enough to be able to use. However, once it's done, I mean, this is gonna make some really awesome cream soda or maybe some gifts for some family. Um, anyways, if you're interested in learning more about this and actually going through the proper guide instead of my hacky version, uh, definitely check out the link for the vanillary down in the uh, comments down below. I mean, it was just, this guy was just really nice and was able to help me out and, and be able to make it so that I can make this video for you guys. So uh, yeah, uh, with that being said, that's pretty much it. Um, I do have to say one last thing about this, which is if you decide to do this yourself, Anytime you work with this, your hands and your whole apartment might just smells like vanilla and it's great. Like every time I walked into my apartment for those weeks while it was drying, I was smelling this amazing smell and that was awesome. Anyways, enough talking. I'll see you guys next week. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe and bye.